I just did a video on metabolic rate. Hi, this is Greg Ellis. I just argued that you can't change your metabolic rate. Now, that is basically true. But you can modify it ever so slightly with herbs like ephedra or green tea. You can increase your metabolic rate by 1 or 2 percent. Now, this is relatively inconsequential compared to the fact that you could go out and walk a mile and burn 100 calories. So if you want to go through that and take those herbs, I don't even think you can get ephedra any longer. And uh, green tea, coffee, those things. And they're not cumulative. They're not going to just run your metabolic rate up 10% or 20%. It's just not going to happen. You might get it up a percent or two. That's the extent. That's the most of what you, you can change. These are called thermogenic drugs. Many of these herbs and things like coffee, they're old. They're old drugs. They have a long tradition of use in human history. So they might work for you a little bit, but it's just not going to be a big deal. You're much better off forgetting about these ideas and don't micromanage your weight loss program. Do the things that count. Watch your calorie intake and accurately assess your calorie intake. I still see everybody out there on 1,200 and 1,500 calorie a day diets and they're absolutely convinced this is what they're eating. And then they all come back and say, gee, I'm not losing weight on 1,200 or 1,500 calories a day. That is an impossibility. For a reasonably sized person, your resting, resting metabolic rate is going to be around 1,500 to 1,700 calories. That's what you burn just sitting here like this. And then you're going to move around a bit during the course of the day, and that's going to add another almost 50-60% on top of your resting metabolic rate. So most people are going to be up in the 2,100, 22, 24, 25 calorie range per day. And when you do start losing weight, your metabolism does adapt. That does change. There's no question that that will change. That's a metabolic adaptation. The body gets more efficient at extracting energy from the food that it's consuming. And this doesn't appear to be effective in terms of the rest of the metabolic rate. It appears to be affecting the physical movement. So yes, metabolic rates can change, but you really don't have any volitional control over them. Unless, of course, you want to lose weight. You, you're, you're choosing to lose weight, so you do have some volitional control over that because you will actively be involved in reducing your calorie intake. So that's the only way you can deal with your metabolism. But this is not going to be a big part of what you do. Of course, metabolic adaptations are a major problem in people regaining the weight they lost. And you really have to be aware of these and understand how they're acting and how they're trying to drive you back to your pre-weight loss weight. That's exactly what's going on. The body wants to go back to where it was. It doesn't want to go down. So you have to employ all kinds of techniques to do this. And of course, one of the major, most important things to do is avoid hunger. Best way to do that, avoid carbohydrates. They make you hungry because the glucose from carbohydrates gets converted to body fat. So now it's no longer in the blood to serve as a source of fuel. And you get hungry because the tissues aren't getting the food they need. So try and keep all this stuff together in your, in your weight loss and weight control program. And you will be successful. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.